Hey there, everyone. Mr. Liquid. Oh, f my foot's falling asleep. All right, let's do this. Uh, hey, everyone. It's Mr. Liquid Matter here. Um, yeah, a lot of you, well, not a lot of you, some people have uh, requested for me to show you um, how to make a password security door using ComputerCraft in TechIt. Um, some people have suggested, oh, why don't you just, you know, send the password from one computer to another via RedNet and just have that one computer be a terminal where it's just going to double check. So even if somebody controlled T and terminated the program, they still don't get your password. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, you know, it's a good idea, but somebody else can just, you know, set up another computer somewhere else on the server and just have it listening to all packets coming in. And once it sees the password come in, boom, he just stole your password. So I found a better way for you. We're going to disable control T. We're going to make it so you can't terminate that program once you started it. Pretty simple. So let's say you, uh, I don't know, you're going to make your uh, computer there and you're going to have a door there. And um, if you have access to uh, disk drives, uh, I recommend you use it. Um, some servers don't have them because the server admins don't know that they need to patch ComputerCraft and tech it for disk drives to work in multiplayer. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and slap the computer on the back or the uh, disk drive on the back. And I have the uh, floppy here that we can uh, show you how to do that. Uh, but if you want to edit the floppy because it's a startup file and you can't force terminate it, you need another computer system. So we're going to go ahead and set up a computer system here. Ah! And we're going to turn on the operating system so you see how we have, you know, Craft OS 1.3 up. Um, that's when you put the floppy disk in to edit it. And now you can open it up and it doesn't auto run or anything. So we're going to go to CD disk because it's saved on the disk. And then we're going to edit startup. Okay, see that file name startup? That makes it so it auto runs whenever the server crashes and reboots and all that BS. This is the entire program, so pause the video right now. I blew up my screen so you guys can read it. You know, if you need to make the video go to 720p, go ahead and do that. Um, but we're going to walk through this now. Function.lock. Okay, if you don't know what a function is, um, we're basically creating a program instead of a program. A method, if you will. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're creating a function called lock. You can name it anything, but for, you know, simplicity reasons, we're going to just name it lock. So lock, parenthesis, parenthesis. Um, term clear and term set cursor position. Uh, that's going to clear the screen, so it gets rid of that silly, you know, computer craft 1.3 BS on the screen. And we're also going to be setting the cursor at 1.1. 1, 1. This is the magical line. This is the magical line everybody wants for their computer, computer doors, okay? So you need to have this line. OS dot pull event equals OS pull event raw. Make sure you have those capitals in there, E's and the R. Okay, this line is going to disable the user from using control T. They will not be able to terminate the program. And in the same instance, you will not be able to terminate the program. That's why I recommend you put this onto a disk so whenever you need to change your password or if you want to edit the program, you don't have to rewrite it over and over and over. Okay, so save it to a disk if you can. Right here, pass equals io.read. This is right now the program is paused and it's waiting for somebody to type in something. Whatever is typed in, it's going to save it into the, the variable pass, which is a string. And then we're going to test it. If pass equals equals darkmatter2222, which is my online username, then term.clear, which is going to clear the screen again. It's going to turn on the right side redstone. So it's going to apply redstone power to the right side of the computer. So redstone.setoutput, capital O, right comma true then we're going to wait for three seconds the door is going to stay open for three seconds and then we're going to that is really bothering me let's go ahead and turn that off oh god okay good it worked all right it's back where we were sleep for three seconds and then redstone set output right false so we turned it on we wait three seconds and we turn it off and see how we have lock parenthesis parenthesis now we're jumping right back up here. So we're restarting the program, okay? Now let's say somebody typed in the wrong password, okay? So it's going to go if password equals equals blah, blah, blah. And if it's wrong, it's going to jump down to this else statement and it's going to do lock. And then it's just going to restart the program again. So the program's going to keep repeating over and over until they get the password correct, okay? These two end statements here, end, one of them is for ending the if statement and the other one is for ending the function. And then this last lock statement is actually the first statement that's going to be actually executed. Um, it's the computer is going to run through all this code. It's going to see that it just created a function, it ended the function, and then it's actually going to run the function. So you have to have that last lock statement. To save your program, control enter, control right arrow, enter to exit, and then take your disk out. Easy as that. Now see how this computer isn't on and see how this computer is on? Leave the computer off. 
right click on your disk drive put it inside there and then right click on the computer and boom the program is automatically started because we made the startup file in the disk okay so let's say we typed in uh, blah, blah, blah. all right that's not the password um uh, dog no dog meat no what's that guy's name that created minecraft oh notch no that's not it dark matter two 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 there it is it opened the door and boom close the door again so as i turn off my sound you couldn't hear the door actually open uh blah, blah, blah. there you go wrong password door didn't open um let's say you don't have access to computer drives we're gonna take that out of there we're gonna restart this Let's say you don't have access to computer drives and you just got this screen here. Type this in. Edit. Start. Up. Just start typing your code right there. Okay? That's going to save it to the computer. Now, if you don't do that, if you, uh, if you don't have access to this, just keep in mind that every time you break this computer, you're going to have to rewrite all the code again. Okay? So just keep that in mind. If you don't have access to disk drives, it's just a little more sensitive, but it still works. Just write it onto the computer itself. So, yeah. Yep. If you need to edit the code, where did that floppy go? Where's my floppy? There it is. Okay. Um, if you need to edit it, just go to a computer that's already on, that's not running the program, put it into the disk drive. Boom. There you go. You can still edit it. Uh, oh, a bug I found. Uh, these doors right here. Get out of here. We're going to go ahead and uh, have a mock situation here. You could just type slash reboot, but I have more fun destroying things. There you go, the program's running. Um, as you can see, that works for the door, right? Now watch this. I'm going to break the door, and I'm going to place my reinforced stone up and around. And I'm going to place the door again, okay? Door didn't open. You have to place the door first. See, now it's open. Now it's just going to be forever open. You know, enemies can just stream in now. So when you're placing your door, just make sure... Ah! You gotta place the door first. And then place your stuff like this, you know. And then... And it works. Pretty straightforward. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys.